Contemporary artist Polly Alakija can be said to be talented. She has been able to carve a niche for herself, drawing and painting virtually anything that moves. Besides loving art, Polly is also fond of children. And whenever she's not directing her brushes on an object, she's directing children to find expression through the art. These kids know me quite well because I've done a couple of projects at this school already. Um, school's not in session today, but these kids actually live here on site. So whenever I come, these kids are always around. So they know me quite well. So yeah, it's fantastic. Um, building up a relationship with them. Um, whenever there's anything to do, they know how what my expectations are. So I've got my little team on the ground here, which is great. I love working with children, but whenever I suggest to people that, oh, there's a mural, let's, let's do some public art involving children, normally people get a bit apprehensive, you know, oh, blimey, if you're working with children, it's going to look an absolute mess. Not at all. If you, if you manage it properly, it can look stunning. Let's have some confidence in them, let's help um, build up their skills, and let's have a lot of fun with them. The children, although exhibiting the exuberance expected from their age, are eager to learn and put all their mind to it. The the biggest change has been that they know that um, Auntie Polly is not running away after 20 minutes. So that if we're doing any activity, you don't have to have a mad panic attack to get into it and get it all done quickly. That we have time. So I think they will calm down a bit. So whenever I go into a new school, um, I have the same problem. Kids are so hungry to get involved that their overexcitement sort of messes things up a bit. But the kids in this school, um, their concentration levels now are fantastic. So they kind of understand the do's and the don'ts. So we can get a lot of work done, which is fantastic. Still, drawing is one of Polly's favourite things. And with these budding artists occupied, she focuses on her subject and gets down to recreating the image. Her efforts at adding colour everywhere has its rewards. It has caught the eye of the Lagos State Government and an invitation has been given to her to be part of the celebration of the metropolis. I've been engaged by the Brand One Lagos, which is an initiative of the Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture to be the artist in residence for the Brand One Lagos. This is all about rebranding Lagos State and rewriting the story and putting out a positive image about Lagos, um, rewriting the script showing to not only Lagosians, people within Nigeria, but also internationally, that there's a very positive story to be told in Lagos State. For this project, Polly intends to focus on subjects she feels will reflect the true spirit of Lagos. Every day I have a goal to do another portrait, draw somebody I meet in Lagos, to draw the faces of the people who really make up this state. We all know who our leaders are, but we don't know everybody else in the state. The, the people who really make this great big machine work, who, the people who are the heartbeat of Lagos State. So every day I'm doing another portrait. It can be anybody. Um, anybody from somebody running a business to 
the children in this school, to their parents, anybody I meet, anybody who's prepared to sit down for me for half an hour and pose for me, I'll, I'll draw their portrait. So I'm trying to build up a series, Faces of Lagos. Um, there's a lot of emphasis always on the big names here, but not enough emphasis on people in the street. When I look around Lagos and I look at some of the iconic structures you have in Lagos that date back to the 60s and the 70s, look at the National Theatre, look at TBS, look at what our international airport looked like at the beginning, and look at the art as well that was part of the architecture. There was some incredibly brave public art done in the 60s and 70s in Lagos State. And where, what's happened to that? Lagos has become a rather, it, it's getting an increasingly sophisticated city, but at the same time, it's, I, I'm worried it, it could end up getting a bit generic. Where's that creativity? Where do we see that innate crea creativity that just bubbles up everywhere in the city? We see um, Ni the creativity of Nigerians across the world. You come to Lagos, we're not seeing it out in the public space. Not very much, there's pockets of it, but. I'd love to see a lot more of it. As a child, Polly has always dreamt of being an artist, and this has come to pass, bringing with it fame and perhaps some fortune. Her desire now is engaging the next generation to discover not just the good in themselves, but the creative as well. Born September the 22nd, 1946 to a royal family in Ndo State, Sunday Adeniyi, popularly called Sunny Ade, is a musician, singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist and a pioneer of modern world music. He began his career with Moses Olaya's Federal Rhythm Dandies, a high-life band. He left to form a new band, The Green Spots, in 1967. For various reasons ranging from changes in his music to business concerns, Sonia Day's band changed its name several times, first to African Beats and then to Golden Mercury. In the 1970s and 1980s, Day embarked on a tour of America and Europe. His stage act was characterized by dexterous dancing steps and mastery of the guitar. His next album, Synchro System, Produced in 1983, was equally successful and earned him his first Grammy Award nomination in the folk ethnic music category. It's been decades of resounding success for this artist who has received a lot of accolades for his type of music. He's been classed as one of the most influential musicians of all time. You can enjoy Art House on any of these platforms. contemporary art that talks about global issues and paints vivid images. And that's how we wrap up this week's edition of Art House. Thank you so much for making us a part of your day. And let's do this again next week. I'm Melinda Akinlami.